Okay, so um, as I mentioned, the last time we did an update was at our December AGM. And so we gave a bit of an overview for the year of what we'd covered. We will be doing this general meeting again later in the year. I think it's around August, September for a further update, which will be after the end of the financial year. And then again, you'll see an update at our AGM that is in December as a part of our Christmas party like we did last year. So I just want to chat through a few things that we're working on to improve how the Chamber runs. And we're continuously trying to improve and provide better services to our members and, and also to what we consider to be our customers. And our customers are, in fact, the 25 to 30,000 businesses that are in the Hills LGA. And then, of course, our members who, at this point in time, we have around about the 408, I think Richard said last night, members that include some of our Yahoo, which is our, our Young and Hungry, um, under 30s and the whole point of that is to make sure that we understand what our members need and what our business community needs so the one of the key things we've been looking at is membership growth and targeting businesses that can add value to all the other members of the chamber so looking at different size businesses different types of sectors that create really good supply chain relationships for the members that we have already within our our, our cohort the other thing that we've been looking at is creating alliances and expanding some of the programs and services we have, but not by reinventing wheels. And so we're doing this through partnering and slowly but surely, while still navigating the COVID you know, challenges over the last year and over the last six months, we've continued to develop some new partnering opportunities and you'll see more of those roll out this year. The other thing that we're really conscious of is we can be really good at bringing in lots of new members, but if we're not looking after the members that we have by providing diversified benefits and creating deeper engagement opportunities and, and more value for the members that are already with us, then we'll have an even bigger backdoor with people who leave us, which is not what we want. We want to keep the members with us, um, provide loyalty and a good value to them. So that's a, a key strategy that we've been working on over the last few years and we continue to do so. And to be able to run a successful organisation, we have to have the right foundations in place. And that means making sure that our teams have the right systems to use, are well equipped, and that there's enough people, enough hands to the plough, if you like, to be able to actually serve the hundreds and hundreds of businesses that are in our community and as a part of our membership. So we've put a lot of work and energy over the last year or two into improving some of our systems. And of course, that takes quite a bit of energy to do the planning work before you can implement that, which we're in the process of at the moment. So a little bit of an overview of progress so far. Now, this is actually since January and since the, the very, well, basically since our AGM, these are some numbers to make you aware of. So we've actually had 25 new members. That was up to the end of February. Since the start of this year, we've continued to provide our monthly information sessions and been implementing some new workflows in our CRM tool. We've been creating some more bonus member benefits and encouraging particularly some of our hospitality venues to start creating those benefits for members to be able to access discounts at their locations. We've continued to increase our social media reach and you'll see we've up to almost 50,000 social media uh, database members. These are people that are actually engaged on a regular basis with the posts and information we put out. And why that's important is one of the key benefits we released towards the end of last year was our social media package, which any of our members can take advantage of, where you can leverage the database of engaged people we already have with the Chambers social media reach to reach your own clients through that known customers. So it's worthwhile checking out that social media package because that's the type of numbers that we're able to get to. And of course, most of those people would be business owners and business people. We've got 350 active members. There's about 70 members, 60 or 70 members who are our Yohu cohort, which is our under 35s. And we've been working on some working groups around building construction and women in business so we can continue to expand those programs this year. A really big thing that we worked on last year and we're expanding this year is around our advocacy portfolio. And that's about making sure that we're taking the voice and the needs of our business community to people who make decisions at a regional level, at a state level, and at a local level with ministers, council, and other industry bodies. And we'll continue to develop that this year. So you will actually see some things coming out where we're asking you to give us feedback and information and to input into that over the next few months. 
I'm not going to go through all these stats because you can see them pretty clearly here, but everything has been moving forward, expanding, and we've been able to deliver pretty much everything we intended to start delivering this year. I think the only thing we weren't able to do was our February breakfast, and that was more to do with the fact that people just weren't ready to come back and network at the start of February. Um, they were either on a bit of a, you know, go slow for the start of the year or a little bit nervous about COVID and, you know, what that meant for them and their business. So other than that, though, we've continued to hit between 50 to 80 guests at all of our events since the start of the year. And it's been a really good start with some really amazing events like the one we had last night at Enzo's, which was a really wonderful opportunity for people to connect again. There's a big process that we undergo at the very start of the year. And so from a governance point of view, um, you need to be aware that we put together a very detailed budget at the start of every year. And that goes into making sure that we're viable as an organisation and that we're accounting for the costs of doing business. So that when we set our pricing around things like events and activities and other things like that, we're able to deliver them and keep delivering them, but not have to charge unreasonable fees for people to attend. So that balancing act of getting it right, uh, we spent quite a bit of time in budgeting in the first few months of the year, and that's now been completed for the year ahead. Um, you can at any time, if you are a member of our organisation, request information about our financials. And uh, our treasurer, Joanne Brooker, is on the call today, and she's going to take you through um, just some updates on where we're sitting currently today. But if at any time you want to understand more about what our financial situation is and, and how we go about making some of those decisions, we try and act as transparently as possible. So you are welcome to have a conversation with us and we can share information about that at any time. I just want to make sure you're aware of who your leadership team is. Now, when I say leadership team, this is the board of people who run the overall organisation on a day-to-day -day basis. But this leadership team extends beyond that into things like our My Community leaders, who we acknowledge some of them who were at last night's event. But you can find out anything you like about the organisation through some of the different leaders, and particularly this group here. You can see them here on this slide, but also... On our, our team section of our website, you can see little pretty pictures of everybody, a little bit of a portfolio on each, and you can contact any one of them at any time if you want to have a conversation about the area that they're responsible for on our board. So we try and break our board up into responsibilities around portfolios like partnerships and systems, marketing, et cetera. So if you've got an interest in discussing how you can get involved in the chamber or questions you have about some of our activities, this is the group of people to have a chat with at any time, but you can find that on the website, as I mentioned. Uh, Richard put together some really good stats the other day around where we sit, just as a bit of an FYI, and I thought it'd be good to share some of these. So um, this gives you a bit of an overview of what type of representation our members have. So 153 of our members, or 46.5%, actually don't have a direct industry competitor in the chamber. They are unique, and that's an amazing opportunity for those members. There are lots of opportunities for people to join us where they are a niche or unique service provider or product provider. So this is a good thing, and our business directory is a great place to find that information about those members. 92 of our members are actually led by women, so they, whether they are a solopreneur, whether they're an employing business, whether they're a major corporate who have leaders that are involved, and that's a really great representation of women in our community. It's probably about right for the number of women who are actively involved in businesses where they would actually want to network to grow versus some that might be more e-commerce based and, and don't need to get out and spend time in the business community. And we're always looking to increase that number and see more women in our community involved in our activities. 133 of our members or 40% of our membership have actually been with us for more than five years. And I'm really proud of that. It means that businesses in our, our cohort in our community enjoy being a part of what we do as a chamber and a lot of them are involved in our my board activities our my community groups as you can see 46 percent of our members are actively engaged in our my community groups and that keeps growing every month um, and we're really looking at making sure that people stay with us for longer than a year. And often when people join us, they join us for a year or any other networking organisation, if they don't get looked after well, if they don't understand what it is that the chamber is about, then it's really easy to just fall through the cracks and leave. And something that we've worked very hard on in the last couple of years, and Richard does a lot of work in this space, 
is helping our newer members understand how they can get deeply involved and access all the benefits that are available to them in the chamber. Now, if you're a member who hasn't been with us for 12 months, you've actually been with us for a couple of years, and you think you might need a bit of a refresher on what kind of benefits are available to me and how can I get more out of the chamber, then I recommend booking a meeting with Richard as our membership manager so he can take you through all the great stuff that's available and help you get more out of what you're doing in your membership. So I'm not going to go through all of those, but you can see there's a really good breakup of size businesses within the chamber. Um, you know, the bulk of them, which is not unusual, is, of course, our um, businesses that are employing usually less than about 10 people. Um, but I have to preface this by saying many of our members who are solopreneurs or are only employing one or two people use huge numbers of contractors for their extended virtual team. And contractors, of course, can be just like having employees. It's just like managing them. There are some obvious differences, but it doesn't necessarily mean that our one-man band businesses are, in fact, truly one-man band businesses. They often are operating more as a business with, say, five employees or contractors working for them. And we do acknowledge that there are some complexities in that. And one of the other things which we introduced a, a couple of years ago was our Kickstarter program. And that's really for businesses who are in that first 12 months of operation. And that was a great way to ease some of those members into being a part of a business community in that sort of initial period. And we're going to look at that again this year. Um, just to, to move on from these stats, I I'd like to get into our finances. So Joe, if you could uh, jump on and maybe just take us through this page. Yep, certainly. Thank you for all that overview. Um, just a quick view of where we're sitting. So just over 93,000, a little bit more than 93,000 um, bank balance at the end of February. Um, but the total assets as of the end of the February are 160, nearly 168,000. So we're in a pretty good position. Um, and knowing that with um, the board and the different portfolios have actually been working really hard on making sure that their budgets are, are as um, accurate as possible and as detailed as possible, means that we'll, we'll, um, we'll hold on to as much assets moving forward if we can to be able to then jump quickly if we need to, should COVID uh, suddenly hit and um, change things, change our, our way of working. So just some other yeah, surpluses there. Government sits part of the um, income in the last six months with um, some of the job saver money. And we also received a small business grant at the beginning of the year to, um, to help promote and help small businesses and make sure that they can connect through aspects of the chamber that they might need to. So as Kerry mentioned earlier, if anyone's got any questions, it's an open book. You can always contact me directly through the chamber and um, we, we can show you any more detail of things. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. And I just want to also mention that one of the things that we're doing as a part of our, our funding and our income is we're actively looking at what grants are available through the government beyond, of course, the COVID type of grants that have been helping businesses across the board. We actively look at federal and state grants that might be appropriate to our organisation. And there's not a lot that are available to us, which is unfortunate because of the nature of what we are. But it helps us to look at what options might be you know, able to fund. One of the things that we did get funding for, which we're quite thankful for, is as part of Small Business Month this month, uh, we actually received a grant to support our uh, one of our events for oh. this month, which was really great from the state government. So we'll continue to look for those. And as members, if you come across anything you think that might be worthwhile for the Chamber to look at as a, a program-based grant, then please let us know. We're always on the lookout for it. Uh, David, do you want to just give us a quick update on um, how we're tracking as a secretary from our compliance point of view? Sure, I'd love to. And um, thanks for the opportunity, Kerry, and thanks for everyone who's here today. Uh, so as you just noticed, and as Kerry mentioned, that the budget has been completed, has been approved, and you were able to um, see the financial reports there as well. Um, and uh, we're actually... Uh, forecasting quite well for the new and existing activities that you can find on the calendar. All the ASIC NA2 obligations are up to date and, and will remain compliant, thankfully, and that's a uh, big thing to have nowadays. They're, uh, they're 
the international standard uh, standards audited was completed as well. And we we're complying in that space. Now, as a, as a public officer and secretary, alongside David Ferris, we're working on member experience and we're planning um, a member experience and engagement. And that's one of the things that we are focusing on this year. And um, that's, well, my reports are one of the shorter ones. I just felt like it. And um, uh, if any questions, any, any ideas, any suggestions, would love to hear from anybody. Thank you. Fabulous. Thanks, David. And he mentioned member experience there. One of the important things that we're looking at when we're talking about relevancy of activities and benefits for our members is understanding what the experience needs to be across all the different ways that we interact with our members and, of course, with businesses generally across the community. And that's quite a large exercise that he and David Ferris are working on, which will cover pretty much every portfolio and area of what we do over the next year to make sure that it's being transformed into a really positive experience for people. Um, Amanda, I'm just going to get you to mute everyone except for me, if you don't mind. So I just want to quickly cover off a little bit about administration. Now, obviously, if you're supporting 350 members, you know, 400 will include a Yahoo and then activities that extend well beyond our membership, there's a lot of administration that's involved in that process. So we, uh, Amanda uh, from Streamlined is our admin support person. And when you send an email to support at, that's who gets that email and, and helps out. So there's a whole bunch of things that happen behind the scenes. Um, that includes things like managing our calendars, um, various different event registrations, inquiries from different members, and just making sure that as a board, we're supported and, and you know, a hundred other things. But one of the key things that we're working on um, as a team is looking at how we create more efficiency to manage all of that administration across every single activity and portfolio. And we're investing heavily in um, getting involved in the use of systems that support that. So one of the things we've been working on over the last six months is the use of things like Trello, um, Active Campaign, and ClickUp as probably one of the newer components to really streamline that process. And um, that's working in conjunction with Amanda doing that work, but also with Phil, our systems uh, portfolio manager from the board. So you may see from time to time us referring to some of these systems. And that's all about becoming better at what we do and that laying those great foundations for growth. A quick overview from partnerships. So on an annual basis, we review all of our partnerships and, and what partnerships are is they're a mixture of program specific and core services provided to the chamber. There's absolutely no way as an organisation we could afford to do everything we need to do and have to pay to have it done. So with things like, you know, legal services, accounting services and marketing and many, many other in very important just running of the business type activities, members provide us with their partnership in exchange for promotion. So they will provide us a set and specific scope of services in exchange for being recognised as a support partner. We've now done a review of all of the partnerships for the start of this year and pretty much all of them now have been locked in. There's a couple that we're still just working on some scope with. But we will again look at our partnerships just after the halfway point this year. So as an organisation, we are always open to hearing from any of our members who would like to supply services to the chamber. Now, it, there's a, a mixture of different opportunities and we've actually put out an email only over the last week, which gives you a bit of an overview of what sponsorship opportunities there are which are different to partnership opportunities. So if you'd like to find more information about, well, what's the difference between partnership? What are the sponsorship opportunities? Then I would invite you to have a chat with Nathan Williams or Sarah Altachi or our membership manager, Richard, to get a bit more information about that. But you can also find information on our website about all of those type of opportunities. So I'm not going to go into much detail around that other than to say that everything is pretty much up to date and we will be looking again halfway through this year at uh, expanding that. Now, Richard is responsible for our connection and engagement 
And a lot of his role has been over the last 12 months connecting with all of our members, particularly around checking in and just seeing that you're okay. And so that's been really about him phoning people and emailing people, having conversations, and he'll be continuing to do that over this quarter because we want to make sure everyone's tracking okay going into 22 and also getting feedback from people about what they need from us. Uh, his information sessions, which are for people who are considering being members of our chamber, have been running each month and they will continue to do so. They're all held on Zoom, so it makes it really easy for people to get to and ask questions. We're averaging about six to 12 people at each of those, and many of those are becoming members each month, which is wonderful. Um, he also spends within the first 90 days of any new member joining us time with each of them to help them understand that process, as I mentioned before. And then he's also responsible for getting involved in the renewal process of members as well and helping them through that. Um, a little thing that you'll see come up very shortly, and, and he will probably next month start offering this to most of our members to get involved in, is what we call member in focus. I'm not going to go through that in too much detail at this point because we're just finalising some of the revised planning around how that program will work, but essentially it will provide members with an opportunity to promote their business at our networking events through a, an eight-week, eight to nine-week program, both before, during, and after those events for the year ahead. So if you've been thinking about how could I maybe be a spotlight person presenting at one of our events over the next year, then that would be the program you would want to connect with. A little bit further in regard to our member experiences. So we've had our business networking events and I've mentioned before that we're getting really good attendance to those. And it's a really good in, uh, mix of um, members who've been with us for a really long time of different sizes, members who've only just joined us who are just trying out and getting used to networking with us, as well as a whole bunch of guests who are just coming to experience us for the first time and see what it's like to be part of a local business chamber. So it's a lovely mix of people who are getting involved. Our connectors still performing at all of those events. They have connector lists, which shows everybody who's registered for the event and you're able to ask them to connect you up and introduce you to someone you'd like to meet at those activities. Even if we have to go online at any point this year, our connector program will still run and we'll be looking at how we help people meet each other. Thankfully, even though we've had floods over the last couple of months, all of our golf days have been able to run and our next golf day has been um, approved. We're, our sponsor is Castle Hill BMW, who have got some really good, interesting prizes and things that they're doing on those days. So we've been growing our golf days as a program. There are five golf days this year and fingers crossed they will all go ahead. One of the things we do have available, if you're a novice golfer or very, very social like myself, we do have a nine holes option, which starts a little bit towards the end of the pack. And uh, it's a very, very social team. So if you're just getting into it or you want to give it a try, come and join us in the, the nine hole option. Our chairman's coffee catch up has been happening each month. It's just a very small, informal opportunity, particularly for some of our newer members or people who are a little bit shy of going to big events at the moment, where we just have a, a cup of coffee, get to know each other, and that's at the Fiddler every month. And you'll see those on the events calendar. I just want to mention that we do have our annual leadership lunch, which is on the 13th of April. That's going to be a fantastic event. And our chairman's lunch is in September this year. And we've already secured a number of our state ministers who will be attending for that event as well. Further to that, we have been expanding our industry and area specific programs. So these are things like our CEO lunches and our industry cohort catch-ups. Our building construction industry catch-up will be happening in May and we'll be releasing that information very shortly. It's gonna be online and it'll be quite structured so that it will help people who are attending to be able to meet people who are up and down the line in the supply chain in a more structured way so that they feel they get really good value out of having attended those events. And our financial services sector we're doing our first CEO lunch next week, which will be fantastic for that sector as well. I'm not going to go through too much detail on the member benefits. A lot of these are available on our website, but there's a few things we're working on. Um, Joanne and the team are working on some different payment options that we're going to be implementing probably towards the midway through this year. Um, we're also got a bunch of bonus benefits 
that are, are coming online, but there you can see some of those on our website. And we'll be looking particularly at our member directory over the next 12 months to see how we can improve that. And I've already mentioned our social media package, which if you haven't gone and checked out, there's a page on our website that has a complete how do I do this step one to four so that you can get involved and take advantage of the big social reach that we've got as a chamber. I just want to highlight our leadership development. This is an area where from feedback from members, it's, you know, people are asking for the opportunity to be developed as business leaders. And that's in all different spaces, whether that's some of our larger corporate type members and our smaller you know, one man band style members. Um, next month, we've got our leadership lunch. And one of the things we're going to be looking at towards the back end of this year is how we might be able to provide various different types of mentoring style opportunities to continue to develop businesses in our membership and in our community into great influential business leaders who set the standard in this region. So if that's something that you have interest in, I would definitely advise you to get in touch with um, Dave Ferris or myself and let me know that you're interested in finding out more about that program. Our marketing team have been working really, really hard um, and Part of the challenge for our marketing team and for George and our support partners is every time there's a micro change that happens because of COVID or anything else like a flood, uh, they have to redo all the marketing each time. And so they've been doing double and triple the amount of work over the last year or two, and they still unfortunately are keeping on doing that. But they've done a fantastic job of continuing to grow, grow our reach and to, to meet the needs of our members and, and of the organisation. Um, one of the things that I think is really important to recognise is that even in a very quiet environment over the last six months, we've been able to grow by at least four to five percent our reach from a social media point of view. And a lot of businesses and business owners are very switched off over the last three months from social because they're a bit tired. And yet we've still been able to get really good penetration from our marketing and our activities. So the team are continuing to work hard there. You can see that they just keep adjusting their marketing to get past any of the COVID-related changes and keep growing our databases and our processes to make them work better. Um, one of the key things that we've seen as a challenge, and I would highly recommend um, if you are not getting emails from us and you think, I should have received something over the last month. There's a very high chance it's going into your spam folders. It's a good thing that our various different IT networks are tightening up to protect us as businesses. But unfortunately, what that also means is anything that's coming out from organisations like business chambers and, and various different um, CRM databases like the ones we use are often going into your junk or your spam folders because of those tight restrictions. So please check your spam folders. Please check that we're on a allowed list as a, someone sending you an email to make sure that you're getting our communications. We do send out an e-news and a, a meet the members email twice a month, and you should be getting regular communications also throughout the month via email about the events and activities that are available. And there's a lot of invitations to participate in different programs and groups and forums that are also coming out at the moment. So if you're not seeing that, you are missing some opportunities and I, I highly recommend that you just check to see what your settings are on your email. My community just keeps growing and that's because the need for businesses to connect and to spend time together, supporting each other, sharing challenges, talking through various topics to keep improving is always strong. And we've been seeing growth happen, particularly in our My Enterprise, which is our businesses that have usually around you know, 10 to 15 plus members in there, which is wonderful. We've got two great thriving teams and there's room for a third one coming. Our My Corporates um, have consolidated because we've had some leaders that have um, been unable to continue in the same role. So our two My Corporate groups have consolidated into one larger group at the moment as we look at what we do with our My Corporate strategically this year. We have 11 teams for My Board and all of them are growing and, and there's heaps of room for new people wanting to join a My Board group. And there's a lot of options available. So it doesn't mean it's all in person. There are hybrid options where one week you're participating in person, another week you're online and others that are fully online all the time. 
Um, if you do have questions and you're thinking about joining a My Community group, then Richard Nassif is your main contact for that. So please have a chat to him or send an email to support at sydneyhillsbusiness.com.au and they'll happily look at finding you a group. A really exciting project that um, has been um, really launched over the last three or four months is our uh, education marketplace. So a lot of businesses across our community over the last year created um, online tutorials, training and workshops, some of them pre-recorded, some of them delivered in person and others that they actually just inviting people to come and sit in a room and do a workshop. And we've taken the stance that we want to provide as much education as possible to businesses across the community, but we don't want to be the ones who deliver it. Our members are more, more than capable of delivering a huge range of training options. So you can actually list whatever training or workshops you have on our business education marketplace for a minuscule fee to help us be able to promote it for you and you can find that under the education tab on our website you can see it looks like what I've shown you there on screen and that's available now so if you've got stuff you want to put on there and promote jump on and get it happening today we'll help you through that and something coming quite soon in May that there's a huge amount of work being done at the moment on is a new podcast series which the chamber will be running where we'll be inviting members to participate in um, being hosts as well as being interviewed as part of our podcast uh, which will be called Business Minds and that'll be coming out in May. So that'll be something that you can also get involved in to help get better visibility. And Rebecca Swanson is responsible for education. So if you have any questions about our workshops or the podcast or our business education marketplace, then just send a message to education at Sydney Hills and Rebecca will happily respond to you about that. Systems and technology, we're just continuing to work behind the scenes on automating and scoping out the needs that we have. I'm not going to go through too much detail on that because it's just a continuous work in progress. And Phil has been um, working out who some of the people are in the chamber who do have different technology um, capability to when we're ready to actually start putting a program in place, be able to tap into some of those resources to assist us with implementation. So you may also hear from him over the next few months about getting involved in that project. Um, our Women in Business program has been expanded this year. You'll see we have uh, four lunches this year. So we usually had two, but we've introduced a couple of extra uh, high teas just to do something entirely different. And that's just to encourage more participation from women who are in business as leaders or owners um, to get more involved in chamber activities beyond just these lunches. So to see them as whether they're members or getting involved in my boards, just to encourage that participation and break some barriers for them. I've mentioned already that we are working on our amplification strategy, so I won't go into too much detail about that, but you will see more about that information coming out over the next few months and an invitation to participate. What is coming down the line, which will probably happen, I think, in the next two months, is the annual PSI report, which is a really important survey and report which is produced uh, in conjunction with the Hillshire Council, which gives us an incredibly good overview of what's going on in our region. And I I really recommend that when that comes out, you participate in completing that survey and then we'll have a report that everyone will be able to have access to, which will give fantastic insights and demographic data that will help you grow your business in the years ahead. So just look out for that when it comes through over the next few months. So I just want to get now into a bit of a Q&A to see if there's any questions. I know I ran